This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Aloha. I'm Aisha Joyner, and we are navigating the journey. Today's journey is one that we all need to know about and hope and pray that we never have to take it. But it is a journey that our sister city, San Juan, and the people of Puerto Rico are embarked on. It is the United States Congress and the president are treating the Puerto Ricans as a unwanted stepchild. It is a man-made disaster. Yes, the hurricane came, but what has transpired since then is man-made. And we in Honolulu have to come to their aid. We have to support. San Juan is a sister city of Honolulu, and the um, Martin Luther King Coalition in conjunction with Amnesty International and Puerto Rico Rise Up Inc. are dedicating the Martin Luther King holiday to the people of Puerto Rico in their hour of need. And so you ask, why Martin Luther King? Well, in 1967, May of 1967, a year before Martin Luther King's assassination, he talked about the thing that we have to move from civil rights to human rights and poverty around the world, that we have to look at everybody. He created the Poor People's March because this was for everyone, that we cannot leave anyone behind. So we have come together with these other organizations and you, our listeners, and Think Tech Hawaii to support our neighbors in Puerto Rico. So today my guest is Nancy Weissad, and she is, quote, <laughs> native Puerto Rican, <laughs> as well as a teacher at MidPAC. Mm -hmm. And we also have on the line a doctor. Dr. Lisette Gutierrez. And she is from Puerto Rico Rising, Inc. So all donations go to them. So yes, I am asking you to donate. <laughs> Absolutely ask you to give, give, give. It's a dollar or five dollars or whatever you've got. We cannot leave these people behind. They are island people just like we are. We've been through hurricanes and we know what it's like. But we have not had the man-made disaster. So we need, we need you. Absolutely need you. So, Nancy, thank you for taking the time to be here with us. So, Thank you so, so much. tell us about Puerto Rico, because most of us, other than know where it is, yes. even our president didn't know where it was. <laughs> oh, God, Surrounded by a big a ocean. A big <laughs> ocean. Yeah. He even had a golf course out there, and in true Trump fashion, the golf course is washed out, so he declares bankruptcy, but mm -hmm. he doesn't do anything for the rest of the island. Right. So yes. tell us about Puerto Rico. Well, Puerto Rico is my beautiful island, um, homeland, and uh, I have been in Hawaii for 29 years. Um, but right now, the current situation, um, my fear was when it first occurred, the hurricane in sep on September 20, was that people will just move on and forget about this huge natural disaster. Um, but like you said, it's uh, also a man-made um, problems that have made it worse. And so I knew that the recovery was going to be slow, but uh, for people who are not used to being a third world country, that's what basically it's coming down to. I mean, not having drinking water and you're not used to living in those conditions, it's, it's really devastating to know that the people of your beautiful island are suffering so much unnecessarily. Have and that's been... why I will not let anybody <laughs> forget and maintain it on, maintain attention and keep helping as much as you can. Have you been back to Puerto Rico since the storm? 
I have not. Um, my mother did spend a Christmas there. I was a little afraid for her, but um, she, you know, she could see. Uh, Puerto Ricans, we are very resilient, is what you have heard probably in the, in the media. Um, but yes, we, we know how to get up and keep going and, and not be lazy as some certain people oh. had mentioned. <laughs> so <laughs> certain administration. Um, but uh, we, we continue to work and uh, everybody helps each other. But there is so much need right now and that's why um, we focus. Um, I have, I'm helping from Hawaii. I support Dr. Lisette Gutierrez because she is with a group that is focusing on the most vulnerable, which are the elderly and the children. And that she is Puerto Rican Rise? Rise Up. Rise Up. Puerto Rico Rise Up, up Inc. Inc. And the doctor is on the line with us from Snowstorm in New York. Yes. So, Dr. Aloha. Aloha, how was it? How's everybody there? <laughs> um, we are so delighted so that you've taken the time to be with us this morning. Can you hear me okay? Yes. 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 So I'm going to just tell you um, a little bit of um, what's going on in Puerto Rico. As you all know, it's September 20th um, humanitarian crisis of epic proportion ensued, leading to shortage of power. Um, water, medical care, essential um, supplies, and, um, and hope um, as residents um, see no end to what is going on still um, three months and a little bit more um, since Hurricane Maria. Um, three days after Hurricane Maria, which ended up being Wednesday, I, I took a relief flight on JetBlue to get there, and that Saturday morning, I arrived there where there was no satellite, and, and just to get an, um, an assessment of what's going on, I went to some of the towns and, um, and and met with the Secretary of Health and who asked me to get um, volunteers uh, to get to Puerto Rico physicians. So with all that um, said, um, we built a whole network, including over 3,000 um, physicians from Puerto Rico and mostly um, mainland U.S. to get medical supplies, basic needs, um, and we just um, organized this nonprofit, um, 501c approved nonprofit comprised of healthcare professionals throughout the U.S. and Puerto Rico. It's basically to help rebuild um, the centers of children. There are 32 centers of, of children, centers of children or orphanages and maltreated and substitute homes, which I lived in, in, in Puerto Rico um, for many years. And until four years ago, I did not know there were 32 centers of so many children um, there. The second phase is to help rebuild um, elderly homes. So we just did, in, during the winter, um, during the uh, holiday season, um, we did a huge toy drive for all these centers, and we just did um, a mini gala to start um, raising money to rebuild these centers. Um, on the long run, we um, it's, it's, the crisis has been till three. The last time I was there, this, I was there four times, and still going back to the same town that I went on the first time, you would think there would be a little bit of improvement, but not that's not happening in the, up in the mountains where there's still um, towns where there's still no water. Mm -hmm. um, we did get um, water filters from this company called WaterStep who have been amazingly um, helpful um, to get um, um, water filters to these towns where people just um, get their water and, and and come to a certain town, parts of the town to get it filtered. Still a lot of people without a roof. Um, there's just still a lot of places there they need tarps. Mm -hmm. And um, there is still a lot of people um, in, in the cities who don't have power and dealing with generators. Um, those are the lucky ones. Yeah. Um, but when there comes as a physician, when you come with all the, um, the needs that come behind it, 
between the water and, and contaminated water and comes bacteria and comes things like leptospirosis mm -hmm. and comes with um, with hospitals being jammed with, with patients and even the patients that could be discharged can't be because they don't have um, power to have a ventilator at the house, mm -hmm. secondary um, issues that come behind all this. You wonder when is it going to stop? Um, I've been um, nonstop working with this since September 20th because it, it, it's, it becomes more than, than what I just mentioned. There's a lot behind it. Um, there's a lot behind it, like where a lot of people question, so where is all the money going? Mm -hmm. um, how do you get things to get there? Um, it's You have to go in, on your own sometimes, and, and I found myself, I started this and thinking when I was there, yes, I'm a physician, but how can, besides spending over 150,000 um, pounds of medicine on my third trip, um, and thank you to so many people that were helping to get planes, private planes to get this, and to actually send it um, to the hospitals in need instead of just shipping it and where does it go or does it stop and who takes it and who not, um, thinking of how else can we help. So uh, on my personal level, I started, and Nancy and, and, and Hawaii has been amazingly in help with this, with generators to patients with diabetes, cancer, um, people who need um, CPAP and et cetera, um, and diabetic patients who needed insulin or refrigerator to store their insulin. Not that insulin needs to be refrigerated, but the heat um, damages it. So they were in need. Um, and it, it's just like you think that, I mean, I live in New York now, and, and I hear people saying, well, Hurricane Sandy was terrible. It was devastating for a lot of people. Um, just like um, in Texas and, and everything that's going on in, in the world. Um, but I used to live in, in, in Puerto Rico and believe me, I've been to Haiti um, five times after the earthquake. So I know what Missouri is and, and, and to actually see my people who are not used to having such a, a humanitarian crisis until this time, it, it's devastating. On my first trip, I had to actually rope basic needs to people and up in the mountains in this town called Utuado, and and to to see them receive it and to still be very resilient and saying thank you. Um, it's it's tough when you go back home and you have what they can't have right now. Mm -hmm. So um, so I want to thank Hawaii. I want to thank Nancy for doing such an amazing job helping us. Really? And it, yeah. it only takes if if you could only just give one dollar. And imagine how much you could, if everybody just did that, how much well, it actually could help. Whatever we can do, we're, we are making every effort uh, to do this, uh, to help you and all the people of Puerto Rico. What is sinful, in my eyes, is that the United States is the richest nation ever in the history of the world and we have homeless people, hungry children going to bed at night with no food, people sleeping on the streets in every city in the United States. Our soul, where do we lose our soul? Somewhere along the line, I, I don't know. But this is just too much, that we overlook people, people in the streets, people like Puerto Rico. It is just heartbreaking to think that, this, that we are just throwing away people everywhere, not just Puerto Rico, mm -hmm. the Virgin Islands, Haiti, you know, right here in Honolulu. Honolulu, we sell Aloha, yet we're the meanest city in the United States. <laughs> you know, that's what they say we are, it's because true. we have more people on the street than any city. This, so I'm, I'm asking everyone to dig, dig deep, not just, so we cannot move into a new year a new time and leave people behind in Puerto Rico. This is our sister city. We have to act for our sister city, for the people of Puerto Rico. Well, let me ask a question about the mayor of San Juan, because I have come to love her. And whenever she's on, I just love, love, love her. So tell me about the mayor of San Juan. Lizzie, can, can you hear me? 
Did we lose? Are you talking? To, uh, I wasn't sure if you were talking. Yeah, no, so I'm asking. Or... I'm asking you about the mayor of San Juan. <clears throat> I just love her. So tell me. So Carmen Celine, um, I don't know her personally. I um, I try not to get involved too much with um, politics. That's how I work. <laughs> but she has caught um, a lot of attention, and I I do I do actually compare her to our president <laughs> in a way that they they don't have they both don't have filters. Um, <laughs> but um, I I think she speaks. For for many Puerto Ricans, I don't think she speaks for all of them. Mm -hmm. And again, I I just work with what I I see, and I just try to to get stay away from um, politics. I, I I don't believe that's the way um, things get resolved, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, so my goal and and our goal in, in the nonprofit is to actually just. Um, work with um, and and get things where they have to get because these 32 centers of these children, um, they they stop getting help from the government. Oh. They stop getting federal help. They stop getting local help. Um, maybe because of the economic crisis that's going on and that was going on before. And and I'm not trying to cover um, what the issues were from before Hurricane Maria. I mean, I actually believe that Hurricane Maria was just, in a, in a, in a positive way, it's actually created an awareness of what was going on already. That's There's 45% of, of poverty over there already. Yeah. And, well, and people say, well, the grid wasn't good anyway. And it wasn't, but it's not gonna get better anyway now. They're not gonna put it underneath the ground, how, it, how would a lot of people would have thought, oh, they're gonna really fix it right now. It's just standing up the poles and next hurricane that comes, it's gonna happen the same right. thing. Unfortunately, that's that's what's gonna happen and where did all the money go? But it would have been more, much more expensive to actually fix it the way it should be fixed. And well, that would take even even um, longer. So I really don't have anything much to say about the year of uh, San Juan, um, only that um, I just actually hope that she and all the all the all the majors of each town really get their act together and, and see what um, prioritize what what's really um, um, important right now. Um, it's not it's not the it's not the recreative centers of parks. It's, it's actually seeing people that are still without water, without power, without food, without um, a roof. Um, and that's where what? people should concentrate. Um, I, I know um, a lot of things get mishandled um, and, and money goes where it yeah. may be not to be going. And, and, and I find that that's, that's not only happens in Puerto Rico, that happens everywhere. everywhere. That's, well, Doctor, that's we, very unfortunately. We need to take a break and we'll be back in one minute, so don't go away. This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. I just walked by and I said, what's happening, guys? And they told me they were making music. In. We're back, and this is a marvelous day for us. This is our first day back in the new year, and so we are jumping right in to what, for me, is the most important thing. When you're navigating the journey, and we have dedicated to talking about issues that are the way we want to live our lives and what we want to say about the way we live our lives. So one of the most important things then is to look at how we treat our neighbors and how we treat our friends. So we are here with Nancy Wasit. Weisshardt, yes. Thank you. Who is our official Puerto Rican. <laughs> because, it's an honor, quite an because honor. Because we wanted to talk about what is going on with our sister city in Puerto Rico. Well, the whole, all of Puerto Rico, mm -hmm, not mm -hmm. just our sister city. Yes. And so with us, we have on the phone from New York, 
from, let me get this right, Puerto Rico Rise Up, Inc. And we are asking everybody to donate. I don't care if it's a dollar, a quarter, whatever you've got to donate because we have to come to the aid of people in need. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, Nancy? Yes. So tell us about Puerto Rico and what where we are now. Okay, so the current situation, um, the metropolitan area, which is San Juan, the north, um, there's not 100% electricity in all the towns. Uh, not one single town has 100% electricity. But they are the ones that are best. Um, just yesterday on the west side, Aguadilla, um, somebody, if you go to Maria Updates, Hurricane Maria Updates, uh, a person said, finally, I got electricity in my house. And so imagine being over 100 days without electricity and um, just all the stress. People are suffering from um, so much stress that they are becoming stress. Uh, depressed and there is a high ra higher rate of suicide, a depression. Um, so this is really affecting in um, such a big way. Um, I know that the schools, I spoke to my little niece and she's in Rincon and she says that um, they're going to extend the school year to June. Usually school is out in mid-May. So that's good that the students don't get to lose their, their school year. I'm being a teacher here, I do care <laughs> about those things. Um, but Regarding water, um, they're doing better, but there are towns that, like in the um, countryside, Ibonito, where Dr. Gutierrez and I are from, um, that's 2,000 feet above sea level. It's a very cold, and uh, winter, I, I heard that it's gotten as cold as 45 degrees. So it's a beautiful town. Um, and uh, people there, some people don't have water because the, um, the water, depends on the water pumps and that you need electricity for. Um, but some hospitals are getting electricity. I think it's um, on and off, so it's really hard when it's not consistent. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people are starting to be on the internet again. I can communicate with my family on Facebook. Uh, that's because they have solar chargers for their phones. So at least that's one way, but if I communicate with them, I can't expect immediate response. Mm -hmm. uh, they might respond a day later. So recently my dad was very sick and he had to be taken to the hospital and I couldn't get a straight answer till six hours later. Oh. And, you know, to, to get a message that our dad is really ill and I don't know if he's gonna, you know, pass away and, oh. you know, dealing with also the drama, <laughs> dramatic, oh, Okay, my family can exaggerate sometimes, but you know, um, just having that living so far away, it's, it's really hard to deal with things like that. So the stress that they're going through, it's, it's really real. Mm -hmm. uh, gasoline and diesel, the prices, there's not, not, the lines are not too long anymore, but the prices have gone up. Uh, most supermarkets in the area metro, they are fully stocked, but I'm not sure about the inner I say inner, meaning up in the country. The mm -hmm. geography in Puerto Rico is so different from Oahu. Um, I was looking also, it's 78 towns, different, 78 um, Different metropolitan towns, towns with um, their own little so governments? 78 towns were each one with a mayor. So here in Hawaii, we don't have that. We no, just have the, the city and county of yes, Honolulu. the whole it's, island is it's the city and county of Honolulu. Exactly, yes. right? So, um, so there's 78, and that includes two adjacent islands, Vieques and Culebra. And um, Vieques was compared to Cajo Olave. Yeah, I remember that. Yes. yes. Um, there is 9,000 people that live in Vieques. Th these two islands, they're still having trouble with transportation. Um, okay. I heard that you can still apply for a, a tent from FEMA till the end of the month. So it's crazy if you don't know about these things and... You yes, missed the boat. Well, let's. Uh, we only have a minute or so left. Doctor, can you hear me? Is she still there? I can. Yes. Yes. Okay. Now, we we're going to go back to politics because this is this is just as racist and mean spirited as it can be, and I, I I'm just so disappointed with our government um, for for treating you this way. Uh, 
Now, this is my idea. And well, maybe it's not an original idea. But you have so many Puerto Ricans who are leaving Puerto Rico to move to Florida and to move to New York and other cities. My idea, of course, because I'm an old time uh, political junkie, all of those people need to be organized and they need to vote and they need to vote out everybody that's in the, leg in the Congress right now that has refused to help them. They need to know, they, they need to make it clear to everybody why they're in the condition they're in. Now, I, I know you're a 501 and you can't lobby, but I can. And I think you ha they have to organize and they have to say, we cannot be treated this way. And those of us that are not in Puerto Rico, we can do the same thing. We can organize and we can tell the Congress, you cannot continue to treat people this way. That They have to vote against them. They have to stand up and vote against them. Thousands of people are leaving Puerto Rico every day. Mm -hmm. They move to New York, they can vote. They move to Florida, they can vote. They have to do this. Correct. So, like I said, I know you're a 501 and you can't lobby, but but I can. <laughs> and I have no problem <laughs> doing no, I, I it. Totally, I, I totally agree with everything that you just said. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we have to do this. We have to come together. We have to come together. We cannot. You know, like Martin Luther King said, this is a human right. And we, as part of Martin Luther King Coalition, as part of the city and county of Honolulu and ThinkTech, we have to come together. We have to make take a stand. They cannot continue to treat people this way. Yes, I think that we begin with educating people about this. And like you said, you know, so many people are leaving. That means that people that can help these uh, elderly and the younger, the children, they're they're living and that hurts the economy it even does. further. It's a so, big mess. Well, it has And been. when they do leave, because I, there's the other side of the story is that once there are a lot of people who have moved for, let's say, for example, Florida. Florida now is like a mini Puerto Rico, um, mm -hmm. so it's overpopulated now with people in Puerto Rico and even the governor there doesn't even know, you know, what can we do with all. If, if that would so we vote against to him too. If people in Puerto Rico were helped. <laughs> Who we vote against him um, to? He, of, he can a, go. A lot of a lot of physicians in Puerto Rico have left Puerto Rico because they're kind of like stuck and they haven't gotten help. I was mm -hmm. trying to um, tell the um, government in Puerto Rico help them help them rebuild their offices again yes. and and help the doctors stay there instead of not helping them and then you're staying without physicians that you're going to end up needing. Yeah. Um, and, and it's as simple as that. It, it, it doesn't, you know, cost much to help them rebuild their office and, and, and get them back to where they were supposed to, they were before um, to have the, the physicians content and, and staying there for their own people. But actually having all these um, people, physicians, and, and, and the rest of the population leave in Puerto Rico, let's say for Orlando, and, and they once they get there, they, they thought maybe it's a, you know, a, a better life, but they're actually mm -hmm. stuck, and, 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 mm -hmm. and how can they get help in, in, in the state? It's, it's not easy. It's not an easy decision for them to have left, and it's not easy what they're going to do once they're, they have landed um, to the U.S. Well, we have to go. Our time has come to an end. And it's been a pleasure spending this time with you. And we will be back. We'll call you again. And we'll talk as this progresses. Or doesn't progress, whichever the case may be. Thank but you for thank having you. Me. Thank you. It's been a real pleasure. Yes. Aloha. Thank you.